Hello folks, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and this is a banana. One of the most perfect foods in the entire world. It's super duper good for you, loaded with everything you want, including radioactivity. Wait, what? Radioactivity? Yes, bananas contain radioactivity. You see, all bananas contain potassium, which is a necessary nutrient. It's required for your heart beating and your muscles moving and a fluid balance around your body and those sorts of things. But all potassium, all potassium contains a little tiny microscopic amount of a, ver of a very radioactively un unstable version of potassium called potassium-40. The chemical elemental letter for potassium is K, and the number following that is its atomic weight. So K-40 is radioactive potassium. Anyhow, a Bananas like these guys right here are, as a result, mildly radioactive in a very, very small amount. I wanted to see if I could detect it. Now, I've tried with Geiger counters before with mixed results. So today I wanted to try a gamma spect uh, spectroscopy. I wanted to use a gamma scintillator to see if I could pick it up. And the purpose is this, twofold. A, it'd be neat to see if I can pick up the potassium in a banana. But B, this would serve as an interesting model for the ability to detect radioactive contamination, trace contamination in food. Everyone knows that if you had a piece of food that was just covered in like radioactive fallout, you could pick it up with a banana, no, uh, with a banana, with a Geiger counter, no problem. But what do you do in a, in a situation like, uh, for example, in Japan or after Chernobyl, when the uh, the trace radioactivity would be very, very tiny? I've tried picking it up with Geiger counters before doing tests, and depending on the levels of trace it is actually sometimes detectable. Depends on the Geiger counter, the setup, the time, how trace things are. But I wanted to know what happens when you try it in something like a banana, which has such a tiny amount. Let's see how little it has. First off, let's see if we can detect the banana. Cut the sound on. Oops. Instead of the sounder, let's use this little guy over here. It makes a nice sound. Wait a minute. Look at that. Look at that. Check source. Cesium-137. Get out of there. Let's try again. Nothing but background. And you're not going to get anything but background. If I ran this Geiger counter for hours and hours and hours and took a statistical uh, uh, look at this, kind of a statistical approach, I might be able to pull a count or two per minute more off of this. Maybe. Probably not. You, def you definitely aren't going to get anything in the old CDV 700. It's just not going to happen. There's just not enough radioactivity in it. So I did a little bit of math and calculations, and I figured it out. Um, I uh, uh, divided Avogad Avogadro's number into the uh, molar mass of the um, bananas, multiplied by the number of milligrams that are in a banana, multiplied by the natural abundance of K40, multiplied by the... Uh, 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 natural logarithm of 2 divided by the half-life in seconds. But crazy math aside, what I boiled down to is about 14 becquerels per banana. I based that off of uh, a data I got from Chiquita. Chiquita says just how much potassium is in their banana. So, you know, it varies all over the place. So basically put 14 becquerels. And a becquerel is a decay every second. So let's just quickly put that into a number of people can understand. Counts per minute. People like counts per minute. 14 becquerels, we'll just ballpark it to 14, times 60 seconds. It's about, my calculations are about 840 counts per minute from a banana. Most of that's undetectable, almost none of it's detectable. A lot of it's getting just caught from the inside of the banana, because a lot of it can't get out of the banana, it's not strong enough. Some of it is, some of it's not. But bananas do produce, or rather potassium-40, does produce a very powerful uh, gamma ray at 1,460, give or take, kilo electron volts. You can read up all about that in your little handy-dandy uh, nuclear wallet cards. Thank you, American Physical Society. But anyhow, the whole point is to see if we can detect this. Natural potassium. Now, you can detect this, of course, just fine. Oh, let's put this in here. <laughs> I said... You can detect this just fine. Wow. Epic. This thing can't detect it at all. It can detect its check source just fine, but it can't detect this. Let's see if this can do it. This is a much more sensitive unit. Piece of potassium. 
So as you can see, potassium is reasonably radioactive, enough to pick up, hopefully. Bigger piece. But you see the glass on this borosil is actually blocking most of it. I mean, that should give you an example of why the banana itself doesn't read very, rate very high. Okay, so what I did, and I've already performed the experiment because experiment, it actually took 24 hours. It actually took 48 hours to do it. I had to run my, my scintillator for 48 hours to get a background. All the counts I would get within a one 24-hour period. Then I ran it again with the banana, and I took one of these little beakers, and I actually shoved an entire banana into this beaker. Then normally these don't fit. This is maybe too big for the beaker. But um, I had a smaller banana, like maybe this little guy right here, and I squished it and got it all into this beaker, amazingly enough, and I ran it for 24 hours. And believe it or not, I actually found potassium in it. Go figure. Well, here are my results. Alright folks, this is a 24 hour background with my gamma spectrometer. As you can see, these peaks are pretty normal and natural for me. These guys right here come from the lead shielding around my unit. Everybody generally picks up 511 kiloelectron volt peaks uh, for various things like uh, para productions and so on. Uh, these guys right here probably come from the brick in the background, uh, the background from my house. See the brick in my house has uh, thorium in it, so that's probably where these guys are coming from. This guy is of interest though because this is potassium. This peak right here at 1460 kilo electron volts. I sometimes say 1640 because I flip numbers, but 1460 is what I want. And 1460 is the peak for potassium's K40 uh, decay. Now, this peak is going to be in all of my readings because it's in all of my background. It comes from my body. It comes from the wood and my walls. It comes from everywhere. Every time I, my cat walks by the scintillator, every single thing that has potassium in it is emitting this. It's very common. But running a 24-hour scan with a banana and subtracting this from it, if there was anything additional from the ban banana, we should see it left over. Let's see if that is the case. And here it is. Let's flip backwards. This is the banana, 24 hours. Banana, 24 hours. Notice the two are about the same. But you might notice that this banana and the 24 hours here, the banana is a little bit larger, just a touch. And you'll see in a minute when I subtract them what it actually looks like. <laughs> K40 banana. Obviously my isotope identifier doesn't show bananas. I changed that. So anyhow, this is what happens when you remove the background. You end up with this. This yellow, go figure, is the banana. Approximately 174 additional counts. That peak is a banana. Smooth the data a little bit. And let me get rid of the ROI because it might be clear, uh, clouding things a bit. Hmm. Today the software doesn't want to get rid of the ROI. So now it will get rid of the ROI. Let's smooth it again. And as you can see, there's a peak sitting right here for potassium 40. And I know what the rest of these peaks are over here, so I'm not too worried about them. But as you can see, I can easily pick out peaks, including food contamination. Now, one can hardly call potassium 40 food contamination, but the point is, is I can pick it out. And we're only looking at a few becquerels per banana. So that's, that's a pretty decent... That's a pretty decent amount of, uh, of uh, detection ability right there. Well, anyhow, this has been Tom from anti-proton.com, and uh, that's a banana. Well, in closing, we all know what a radioactive check source is. This is cesium-137, very small amount. You take your Geiger counter, put it over it, it ticks, right? Neat. Sample of that isotope. I thought it might be amusing to take some of this, this potassium-40 salt, or actually this is uh, sodium, potassium chloride salt, and turn it into a check source. And so I created this, the potassium uh, check source. It's about a gram of potassium. See? A gram of potassium. And it doesn't register because potassium-40 is not enough to do anything with. But there it is. You could theoretically use this. How's that for you?
my own check source made for potassium 40. This has been Tom from anti-proton.com and bye bye.